Number, we're, at, we're finishing from yesterday, our rotation. So a couple things again to review. Number one, you find the angle doing cotangent to theta equals A minus C over B. A is what's in front of the X squared. B is what's in front of the XY and C is in front of the Y squared. From there, we get what theta is. And for that is a, not only what we plug into the equation, but also, good morning, I think but also what you are going to rotate at the end to. So that, that angle provides two pieces of information that are important. Then we take and we replace every x with x prime cosine theta minus y prime sine theta. And we replace every y with x prime sine theta plus y prime cosine theta. And we plug the theta in. So if our theta is pi over 4, it goes in the place of those things. If the theta was pi over 6, it goes in the place of those things, whatever the angle is. Then we simplify our equation. So yesterday we only had to multiply two binomials. Today you're going to see it takes a lot, it's a lot more, okay? Did it say cosine at the bottom of the board? Yeah, this is a C. Those, remember, those are the equations I'm going to give you, right? So we plug this in and then we plug in and simplify the equation. Then we work to get whatever that equation is into standard form. And at that point, it should either be an ellipse, a hyperbola, it could be a parabola, it could be a circle, but usually if you rotate the circle, it doesn't really change, so that doesn't happen too often unless your, your center is not at zero, zero, but it could happen. And then we graph and rotate the axis, whatever theta is. And then you draw your conic on the rotated axis. So did we draw yesterday? Yeah. Okay, so we did it all the way through the first one, correct? Yeah. Okay. All right, so first of all, you don't need this. The directions will stay the same. They will say rotate the axis to eliminate the xy term in the equation, then write the equation in standard form and sketch its graph. And this time we've got 13x squared plus 6 root 3xy plus 7y squared minus 16 equals 0. The stuff on the top left is going to be provided for you, not your unit circle. All right, so step one is to get theta. So I have to do cotangent of 2 theta equals A minus C over B. A is what's in front of the X squared. What's that? 13. 13. Minus C is in front of the Y squared, 7. And B in front of the XY? 6 square root 3. So this becomes 6 over 6 square root 3, and this becomes 1 over root 3. Do you ever take the sign Yes. Yes, but because I told you it's going to be kept in first quadrant, you, it will probably always be positive. I'm sorry? No. So because we, I mean, normally if I was going to give that as answer, I would tell you yes. But we're about to flip it because we want to get tangent instead of cotangent. So don't waste the time to rationalize it. So this is cotangent to theta. But if I, again, you've memorized your tangents, then I would want to do it as tangent to theta. And it's going to equal the reciprocal, which is root 3. Because tangent's the ones that you know on your unit circle. You know you could figure out cotangent, but if you do what we did yesterday, which is take your unit circle and add on the tangent, which would be zero, root three over three, one, root three, and undefined, those tangents, right, you already know. So it's easier to, in my opinion, it's easier to find the tangent than it is to go in there and find the reciprocals of all that and see which one matches what you just got. So I would recommend at the end, when you get to your cotangent equals something, that you flip it, make it tangent equals the reciprocal. So if I do that, I've got tangent of 2 theta equals root 3, which angle has root 3 as its tangent? Not yet. you got to get the, rid of the tangent first. Uh, so it would be pi over 3. So 2 theta equals pi over 3. And then the last step on this one is to divide both sides by 2 or multiply by a half, and theta equals pi over 6. And so you have to find, out what it is find the angle, then divide by 2. Yep.
same step every time. And this is why I'm stressing to you that like this is what practice helps you with. If you do this problem for homework, there's a couple of them do for homework. And then on Monday, you come in and you do it for the warm up. You've already done this twice with me on your own for homework, another time on warm up, so that by the time you get to test review, these steps are familiar. If you are sitting there right now with earbuds in your ears and you're playing a game and you're not doing this with us, interesting strategy, okay? That's your choice. I'm not gonna take it personally, but know that it doesn't really set you up for success. And again, 20 point question, okay? All right, so now I know theta is pi over six. Again, you get to there. Some mercy points will be thrown in your direction, but hopefully you just continue on and get it all right. So now I'm gonna take my x's and replace them with what x equals, which is x prime cosine. I'm replacing theta with pi over six. It literally will tell you x equals and y equals. So in the x's, you're doing what x equals. And then the y's, you're doing what y equals. You're just substituting it in. Correct. You're substituting it in, but you're also replacing the theta. Like, I'm not just replacing this. I'm plugging in theta while I do that, too. But you don't replace the x prime. No. Well, you're the x prime, no. The x, yes. Yeah. So it would be 13 times what x equals squared. Yep. So x prime cosine pi over 6 minus y prime sine pi over 6 squared. That's the first term. Second term. Actually, I'm going to erase this so I have more space. Okay, plus 6 root 3 times the x, which is the same we just did. x prime cosine pi over 6 minus y prime sine pi over 6 times y, which is x prime sine pi over 6 plus y prime cosine pi over 6. Correct. Plus seven, 20 points. That means you get everything else perfectly right. <laughs> 7 times y squared x prime sine pi over 6 plus y prime cosine pi over 6 minus 16 equals zero. Don't forget the rest of it. So that's a silly mistake people make. I know, I know, I know. Remember, I'm giving you one for graphing and you can, you can use that. It's going to be enough. It's going to. Maybe not for all of you, but most of, and, but most of you. All right. So now we have to do our expansion foiling, right? So we're going to have to Either expand and foil these two or use a shortcut. That's why we, oh, this should be squared. That's why we reviewed it yesterday. Or in this case, these are not the same, so we're going to have to foil this out. But in this next step, remember I do three things. I lose the primes just so it's one less thing we have to write. We have to bring it back at the end, but I'm going to drop the primes. And I find out what these values are, what's cosine of pi over 6, what's sine of pi over 6, and actually replace it with it. And I bump the value to the front and the variable second. So all three of those things happen in one step. Can we do all of that before, like before we expand it? Sure. Plug it all yeah, no, no, I'm going to do it before I expand it. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to have to write, rewrite that as expanded. Yeah, no, no. We're going to do that before we expand it. Wait, what did you say was the third step? The third is just reverse the order. So like if it's root 3 over, it's not x root 3 over 2. It's root 3 over 2 x. Just because we're used to the oh, coefficient being on the front. front. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's just format purposes. Yeah. Okay, so at pi over 6, because you know your unit circle so well, you would tell me that the coordinate point is what? Square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. So all the cosines are going to get replaced with square root of 3 over 2, and all the sines are going to get replaced with 1 half. So 13 cosine pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. X, again, we're dropping the primes for now, but we have to bring them back again later minus one half y in parentheses squared. It's not that bad, right? Plus six root three times the cosine of pi over six again, which is root three over two x minus the sine one half y times the sine of pi over six, one half x plus 
the cosine root 3 over 2 y. Plus, shrink, circle and shrink, circle and shrink, or add paper, yeah. Seven, sine of pi over six, one half x, plus cosine of pi over six, root three over two, y, squared, minus 16 equals zero. Uh-huh. And you can move it whenever you want, but eventually we're going to move it. Okay, so remember we practice our special products. We practice the ones that are in parentheses squared for this reason, and we practice the sum in different ones, right, or the difference of two squares. That one we did yesterday. So if it is something in parentheses squared, I'm going to, first of all, not lose the 13, so the 13 is going to go down. But then the shortcut is square the first term. So this, uh, the three, yep. So 3 over 4x squared. Good. Because this whole thing is what we just squared. Right. Square of the square root of 3 goes to 3. And then square of 2 is 4. Then the last term, I square the second term. So the square of negative 1 half would be positive 1 fourth. Square of y is y squared. And then the middle term is 2 times the product of the two terms. So if I multiply these together, I'd get root negative root 3 over 4xy, and then we double it. So negative 2 root 3 over 4xy. Now I know that can be simplified into a half. But I'm going to wait, and you'll see in a little bit why. Keep it as over 4. You want to keep all the denominators over 4. Why do you square it after you do the product? You don't square it. You double it. Oh. So 2 times the product is that middle term. Oh, that's why you have to square it. Right. Now I'm going to go to the last term. I'm going to skip that middle term because it's the yuckiest. I'm going to go to the last term because it's again. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to the last term. Again, I'm going to go back to the middle term. But I'm going to go to the 7. So plus 7. Same process. Square the first term. So the square of 1 half x would be? 1 fourth x squared. Square the last term. 3 over 4 y squared. Double the product. So product would be root 3 over 4 x y. And then we multiply it by 2. And we keep the denominator as a 4. Watch your signs because that's where people make silly mistakes. If it's negative in the beginning, then the middle term is going to be minus. The last term is always positive, but. The other one had an x, y, too, right? Correct. Middle term is not going to result in the difference two squares. It's not one of those exponents, which means we just get to foil it out. Oh. Yep. So much fun, guys. So plus 6 root 3 is still going to stay in the front. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to foil this out. Root 3 over 2 minus ooh, x minus 1 half y times 1 half x plus root 3 over 2 y. And then I'm going to foil it out. So first, root 3 over 2 times 1 half is root 3 over 4 x squared. God bless you. Outer. God bless you. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. 2 times 2 is 4 x y. Inner. That's a negative one half and a positive one half, so minus one fourth x y. And last, negative one half and a positive root three over two, negative root three over four y squared. And then I combine the like terms in the middle. So root three over four x squared plus. 2 over 4, again, I know that can be simplified, but I'm leaving it as over 4 for a reason. Minus root 3 over 4 y squared. So when we do this, we don't simplify Correct. Because it makes, I'll show you, there's a step that you can get rid of all your denominators, and if you've changed it, it doesn't work. So you want to keep all the, keep all the over 4s. You want every denominator to be over 4. They're all going to be over 
Mm-hmm. If you do it right. Because think about all your coordinate points as you move around your unit circle. They're all over 2 in between 0. In between 0 and pi over 2, they're all over 2. All right. Now that goes what next to the 6 root 3. So root 3 Plus, over 4. Over. Right. 2 fourths xy minus root 3 over 4 y squared. And then that's 7 plus 7. Can I move it? Nope. Plus 7 times 1 fourth. All that's there. And then you can bump the 16 if you want now. Equals. And we're going to bump 16 to the other side. You could keep it there. You just can't forget about it. That's the biggest thing. Don't let it drop off. If we mess up on the middle part, are we like completely screwed? No. I mean, if you want to get it all the way right, yes. But, like, but not for credit. No. If you do some part wrong, um, there's a lot of half, half, half stuff like that. 9.15. Okay. Oh, good. All right. Now, look at all your fractions. What did they all have in common? They're all over four. So, we're literally going to multiply the entire equation by four to get rid of all those fractions. Now, here's what you could have done. Multiply 13 by four, but then simplify four into whatever that number on the front is. I'm not even going to waste my time. I'm literally just going to cancel out all of the denominators. Okay? So it does not impact the 13 because I would have then canceled it back out of the 13. What it does is gets rid of all of these, gets rid of all of these, gets rid of all of these, and we have to go to the other side and multiply it by the 16. That's one of the most common mistakes made. You have to multiply it by the constant. Oh, I'm confused why it doesn't touch the 13. So think about like if you had let it touch the 13, right? You would have multiplied that, which is 52. I would have done 52 times the parentheses. And all the 4s in the bottom would cancel back into the 52, making it back 13. Okay. We just avoid that step. Okay. So it's not going to impact the coefficients on any of them as long as it cancels out all your denominators. So the only thing you're doing with the 4s is cancel. Getting rid of all of them, which is why we kept them all over 4. And then you multiply it by the 16. No, the 4 is gone. And then, but you have to multiply it by the constant. So whatever, if the, if the 16 was still here, I'd multiply it there. If the 16 on the other side, I'm still multiplying it. You okay. have to change the constant. Okay, so now I'm going to distribute my coefficients in. Instead of rewriting it without the 4s, just know they're all gone, okay? So I'm going to distribute the 13 to all of these. So 13, what? No. 13 times 3 is 39. X squared minus 13 times 2, 26, root 3, XY. 13 times 1, 13, Y squared. Yeah. Um, will this method work for every single? Yeah. Every single one? Yeah. So if we get to this part and we can't do it, then we don't need anything wrong. You mean that the fours aren't gone? Yeah. Well, or you reduce, right? So, like, if your natural instinct is to see two fourths and reduce it to a half, that's why it wouldn't, and now four would not go into that. It wouldn't cancel out. No, that's a way to check it, right? Yeah. yeah. It's always four because the denominators are always over two. Think about it, right? It's one half root three over two, it's root two over two, root two over two, and it's root three over two, one half. Anything that's got a fraction is always over two. All right, then I'm gonna distribute the six root three. So positive six root three times root three would be six times three, which is 18, x squared. Then I go six root three times two, so positive 12 root three, x, y. Then I go 6 root 3 times negative root 3, so minus 18y squared. Correct. Then I go to the last one, distribute in the 7. So 7 times 1 half x squared would be 7x squared. 7 times 2 root 3xy positive 14 root 3 x y and last 7 times 3 positive 21 y squared equals 64 that 16 got multiplied by the 4 with me so far now I'm going to combine my like terms. Now the whole goal of this process is to eliminate your xy term. That's what rotation you do, okay? So I'm starting with my xy. 
I'm going to find all the x, y terms here, here, here. I'm going to combine them and make sure they cancel out. If they don't cancel out, something's wrong from there. So it's like your first check. So I do negative 26 square root 3 plus 12 root 3 plus 14 root 3. They all have xy's, but yeah. So this would be negative 14 root 3 plus 14 root 3, and that cancels out. So, so all my xy's are gone, which was the goal. Yep. Um, it depends on what you have. Like, like if it's everything's right. right I'm Maybe half. I'm so yeah. Well, we're not anywhere near Wait, done. I, I thought that was a negative. Oh. No, it's positive. So the X and Y should always go. Yeah, and if it doesn't, something's wrong. So use that as a, st as a, a, a way to check your work. Now I'm going to combine together all my X squared. So 39 plus 18. No. What did I just do? 57 plus 7, 64. So 64 x squared. I added all the x squareds. Yeah. Then I add all the y squareds. 18 plus 7, 25. Plus 21. 13, thank you. 13 <laughs> plus 7. I was like, that didn't work. This is. It's 13. What am I doing? 13 plus 18. Mine is 18. That's what it was. I'm doing steps in my head. See, don't do what I'm doing. Don't do things in your head. 13 minus 18, which is negative 5, plus 21, which is 16. Equals 64. Yep. And now we're like, we're getting warmer, right? What do we think that this is going to be? What kind of conic? It's going to be a horizontal. A what? A horizontal what? Conic. What kind of ellipse, right? Because it's a plus. I didn't hear that. I apologize. Conics are, all of those are conics. So parabola, ellipse, hyperbola, and, and what did I miss? Circles are all conics. So not only am I going to simplify this, but I'm bringing back my primes. Remember, when you give me the equation at the end, it has to have the prime in. So x, all it does is that. That's it. You just, gotta, you just have to put this stick on it. x squared over 1 plus y prime squared over 4 equals 1. Here's the standard form. Do I have to put the Yes. Oh, on the bottom? No. Nope. Remember how you were going to get all 80 points right? <laughs> the A and the C. But that's after you get rid of the X squared. Um, the X, Y. You can't do it. If, they're the, if they are positive, their product is positive. So, like, if you did it from here, their product would be positive. Yep. All right. So, we said it's an ellipse, right? This is going to be ellipse and an ellipse on a rotated axis. What are we rotating the axis to? What angle? Pi over, three. Oh, four, six. Pi over six. Pi over six. Sorry? Because it's a plus in between here. If it was a minus, it's a hyperbola. If it's a plus, it's an ellipse. Okay. Yeah. No. Almost. All right. So the pi over six is kind of over here. It's less than pi over four. So that would be where my angle goes, right? Shh. It's going to get rotated. I'm going to draw this out. That's going to be what my new y axis. And then I'm going to draw a line that is par or perpendicular to that, kind of, sort of. And that's the new x axis. Is it that goes at the top. So whatever the angle is, you rotate. That goes at the top when you rotate. That's your Y. Is it okay if our line is like a little... How are you going to check that? Say again. Like if the line is like a little confused when you drop it. Is this our prime axis? Those are the prime axis. So this becomes X prime. 
and this becomes y prime so no wait olivia the other way around oh i thought it was the other way okay there that makes yes because no, you're going because you're go you're literally clockwise. taking your graph and you're rotating yeah. it. Yep. It's like you're pushing it. So now you're physically going to take your iPad and you're going to rotate it, right? So that that Y prime is at the top, opposite you. I am going to rotate the picture, but you cannot do this. You're going to do this with your iPad flat because you would do that with a piece of paper flat. Yes. So you put your graph clockwise, but when you flip it, it's counterclockwise. Counter you move it back the other way. Oh, yep. <laughs> Okay, you just need to know that wherever your pi over 6 is, is that's your x prime. Then you draw the line perpendicular, that's your y prime. And then like a normal graph, you put your y prime at the top. So we move the angle counterclockwise, but then we rotate it back clockwise to get the y prime at the top. If you're stuck, just look at the <laughs> so we moved it this way right again you're not moving yours you put this line here because that's going to be how you rotate up your x-axis that's your new x prime right then perpendicular that's your y prime and then think about it when you graph your y would always be at the top so you're going to physically take your paper and you're going to rotate it to the y's at the top so i'm rotating my ipad but you're not going to i mean i'm rotating the picture you're going to rotate your ipad so that the y prime is at the top okay now, tell me what you know about this conic. Um, wait. We know it's an ellipse. What's the center? Zero, zero. Is it horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. And how do you know that? Because the X is So you're all wrong. It's vertical. It's vertical because? Bigger numbers under the Y. A squared. That's hyperbola. A squared is 4, so A is 2, which means I'm going from my 0, 0 up to, and I'm going to plot the vertice, and I'm going to go down 2, and I'm going to plot a vertice. Then the B squared is 1, so B is 1, so I go right 1, and I go left 1, and I draw my ellipse. You don't need the foci, you don't need exact points written out, you're just rotating your graph, okay? No, so like when I check this answer, when I check this answer, once I'm obviously giving you points for the angle. I'm giving you points for the equation. Then comes all the other stuff. What the center is, what your A and B are, and then your graph. It's not possible. What? Because the A squared, the bigger number.